for uh, five seasons. Our first guest tonight has starred in the greatest TV spinoff since the Tortellis. The sixth and final season of Better Call Saul premieres Monday night on AMC and AMC Plus. And during the commercials, you can read his memoir. It's called Comedy, 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 Drama. Please say hello to Bob Odenkirk. <laughs> I think we're all glad to see you alive, honestly. Well, I was dead for a little bit. Just, some people stay dead. What's that about? <laughs> um, Not Jesus, he's coming back Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, thanks for saying that. It's very good to see you. Um, and congratulations, not on, on just on be, remaining alive, but mm. also you're getting a star on the Hollywood Walk of What's Fame on Monday. Now? And people can come to that. Everything. The people can come to that on yeah, Monday think, morning. I don't think people realize they can come they to that. They just come, and there's just they just tear up the sidewalk. Mm -hmm. It looks like a construction site, but there's a whole bunch of people in uh, dressed up. Yeah. That's the only difference. And then, uh, so, I don't know, something went wrong, and they gave me a star on some dead-end street near here. They found a... Where is the star going to be? Abandoned street uh, Vine. Oh. oh, Vine's a good street. It's actually a pretty well -known Hollywood street. Hollywood and Vine is maybe yeah, the most famous right intersection. right around the corner, and yeah. I'm going to be right next to Brian Cranston. Oh, that's nice. Uh, it's quite an honor. Quite an honor. Nice. That's, that's a great honor, because he's a great actor, who really got me dialed in, because... The first time I played Saul on Breaking Bad was a scene with uh, Brian, uh -huh. who was just amazing. And I'm sitting across from him at my Saul desk thinking, wow, I better get good at acting in the next two minutes. <laughs> <laughs> it was announced over the weekend that uh, Brian and Aaron Paul will be in this season of Better Call Saul. They will. So, which is, I'm happy about that. Which is a I'm thrilled. You know, we've done such a good job, Jimmy, of keeping secrets on the show, mm -hmm. but it's so hard sometimes. Right. And uh, those guys... Uh, Especially when you announce it. Well, no, I'm glad we announced it. Just get yeah. it out and just get <laughs> excited because they're going to... These two shows, Better Call Saul and Breaking Bad, have never been as, as closely intertwined as this new season coming up. So it's very exciting. If you're a, a Breaking Bad fan, I think you'll enjoy this. And... Uh, yeah. And uh, I, I wondered how they got those guys to Albuquerque in secret. Uh, and then I found out they, they've never left. <laughs> <laughs> they've been living on the sets, waiting to play the characters again. Uh, no, I know they, they love living there. Why not? Yeah, that's, I mean, I, it makes sense. Of course they have to be in it. They kind of do. Yeah. I, I think it's worth telling people, because, come on, what are you thinking? We got to tie these shows together. They do overlap. I was thinking about that. I was watching the first episode of the new season mm -hmm. last night, and I was like, oh, yeah, I guess I know how this ends. Right. It's not like a lot of shows because it butts up against yes. another show that we've yeah. all seen. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. so, Without okay. Without spoiling things, there's more to it, but yeah. Okay, okay, good, all right. <laughs> I'm sure there is. It's I have... so hard to, I can't talk about it, but let's not mention it anymore. All right, we don't have to mention Monday it. Monday night. Better call Saul. Check it out. You, um, you're mentioning uh, living in Albuquerque, yeah. where you, after Brian Cranston moved, you lived in his place? I did. And then uh, our cast became such good friends. Ray Seahorn, Patrick Fabian, Michael Mando, Tony Dalton. It's all good friends, John Carlo. But a couple of us decided to share a house. And I, we got a big enough house that we had our own space. But... Ray Seahorn and Patrick Fabian and I shared a home for three years, three seasons on this. You lived together. We lived together, and Patrick 
woke us up in the morning and made us go on a hike and then <laughs> made dinner every night. And he was the activities director. Uh -huh. uh, and, and Ray and I were the indulgent actors talking about our parts late into the night. Yeah, my character wouldn't do that. <laughs> Your character would do whatever we wrote. <laughs> and, uh, but really, it, was, uh, it would have turned your stomach to hear the conversations, because it was a little too inside baseball. It's weird, acting. though, to be you know, uh, an adult man, and now you suddenly have roommates. Usually, yes. things have gone very wrong yes. when that well, happens. That was actually a thought I had when my son turned four. I remember seeing him in the hallway going, Another man lives here. <laughs> what? what did I do wrong? Uh, but no, uh, actually, it was so great because you're away from your family and you can share uh, the times together and do things. We actually had the greatest memory is we rescued a dog in the desert and uh, she turned out to be pregnant. The dog and did? The dog wow. did. Okay. And so we had babies. Dog babies. This is a picture of. I think of, they call uh, them puppies now. Yeah. yeah. Eight, yeah. eight dogs. Uh, and I was not there when they were born. I promised Ray we'd help. But uh, Patrick and I left for the weekend, and she was sitting there with a dog, uh, and the popping dog... out eight babies. <laughs> she what, was freaked out. What became of the litter of oh, pups? We uh, got homes for all of them. The, the crew, most of them wanted a baby. And uh, after eight weeks, we were able to. Give them the good homes. So this is like a Disney movie that happened during the filming of. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's really, really true. It's really <laughs> true, and it was a great time. But the whole thing was great. Can I ask you about uh, the heart attack? Because yeah. what I'm uh, thinking about it practically. Yeah. You had a heart attack on set. Right. You uh, recovered, thank God. Yeah. And then you come back, and do you pick it up right where you left off? Yeah. <laughs> Halfway through the scene. So. Were we Is there any indication? Well, I don't know. I'm going to have to watch it. Yeah. I, uh, yeah, we shot half the scene, and then I died. Yeah. And then five weeks later, we came back to shoot the other half of the scene. And I had to watch it because I don't have any memory of this incident or the next eight days. Um, so I had to watch the scene and think about, you know, whatever, how I played it. So we'll see. Maybe the yeah. magic of CGI will make me look like the same guy. But yeah. I think I, I think I pulled it off. We'll Did see. you uh, have like kind of like a Tom Sawyer moment when you saw this outpouring of love for you? Uh, you know, people publicly and privately reaching out to Is, you. Are you saying... referencing the Rush song or? Uh, <laughs> uh, I, I, no, uh, but just I had a, like getting yeah, a chance listen, to see your Jimmy, own memorial uh, it, before it was, you die. It was. Uh, so affecting. I'm still, it's still something I think about every day. I literally lay in bed at night <laughs> here listening to my heart and thinking about all the people who responded when they heard this happened. And I just, every chance I get, I want to say thank you to everyone. I mean, social media is a place of poison and evil. <laughs> Until something really and bad happens. And then this yeah. moment yeah. was just beauty and love and from strangers. And I don't know, I don't really have it figured out yet, except that it felt so damn good and still does. And um, people aren't as bad as I thought they were. They're really <laughs> great. Bob Odenkirk is here and here with us. We'll be, have a look at the, a clip from the new season of Better Call Saul when we come back. Do you have any cash for the taxi? All I got is five bucks. Um. Think the cabbie will break a hundred? The sixth and final season um, uh, is coming. And of course, your book, uh, Comedy, 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 Drama, which did not, it, leading up to you, the heart attack, this was printed before yeah, it I happened. Yeah, I finished it a year before. That's going to be a good before. paperback story, uh, <laughs> for sure.
Yeah, I'll have to add it in. One of the in things I thought was interesting in the book is you talk about wanting to direct feature films. This yeah. is something that you wanted to do. And you did it a few times and didn't have a... I bombed. It, you didn't have a great experience I with it. I rotten tomatoed the whole room. <laughs> I, I, uh, I made a couple movies. And yet I had I would a great argue, time doing it. I would argue that those there are some funny movies there. I oh, mean, that's nice of yeah. you to say, let's go to prison, yeah. Brother Solomon. Brother Solomon. Melvin goes yeah. to dinner. And uh, I had a great time doing it. But uh, I, and I wanted to write about my failures, because otherwise there'd only be three things in the book. <laughs> but, uh, I think it's an important part of a showbiz career is to get your ass kicked a lot and, and survive. And, uh, you know, the movies, listen, I made them as good as I could, and there's some fun stuff in there, and there's wonderful performances. All the actors were so great. Um, but I, I just wanted to write about making it through the hard times and not just the things that worked out. And speaking of, like, the early years, the hard times, you at one time did... Uh... It was like a training video for the Old Country Buffet. Yeah, it's actually, I thought, some of my best work, and they didn't... <laughs> they didn't use any of it. Um, you were cut out of the old... I was cut out of the Old Country Buffet training video, but... So, as I became incredibly wealthy, as I am now, <laughs> I... I knocked on the door, and I said, can I get that footage, and I will pay you anything, and I'll do anything you want. Uh -huh. They were like, just give us some money. Don't get off the floor. And, uh, <laughs> and they gave me the footage. Would you like to see it? I would love to see it. I think we would all enjoy seeing it. I want to win an Emmy. I'm trying to win an Emmy. <laughs> Here at the Old Country Buffet, every conversation you hold with a guest should begin something like this. Good evening. Or... Good evening. Fine enough to eat today. Boy, I'll say. But you should never greet guests by saying something like this. Welcome. Are you ready to die? <laughs> or... Who's horny for beef? Or... I'd say hi, but my wife says I can't talk to prostitutes no more. Once you've greeted the guest, be sure to engage them in a brief but friendly conversation. Did you catch a game last night? Or this... Have you tried the lasagna? It's my favorite. You should never say this. Beef or ham? Ham gives me the poos. Who <laughs> this? I was just telling the guy before you that the Jews control the weather. Don't forget to hold quick conversations with our younger guests, too. So start conversations with children by saying something like this. What grade are you in at school? Or this. Have you decided what dessert you're going to have? You should never say this. What's the story with your mom? Does she party? <laughs> Once guests have chosen their meat, we typically carve slices the thickness of a dime. If a guest asks you, I like a half inch slice of that roast beef, please. Say something like this. I'd be glad to carve you that. Never say this. Anything else you want to tell me how to do properly? Huh? <laughs> Raise my kids? How about my wife? You will end each guest interaction with the same phrase. How's that for you? That's fine, thanks. Never end a guest interaction with... You ever see a hemorrhoid up close? Like real close. <laughs> or... Now, why don't you head back to your seat so I can watch you shake your tail feather, you juicy bitch? I want to speak to the manager. I am the mother manager, mother I am the mother manager! Congratulations. You're ready to carve at the Old Country Buffet. Oh, I, I know you were great. <laughs> the sixth and final season of Better Call Saul premieres Monday night, 9 o'clock on AMC and AMC Plus, and his book, Comedy, 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 Drama. The great Bob Odenkirk, everybody. Thank you, Bob. I'll be back with Anthony Kerrigan. Hi, I'm Jimmy Kimmel, and this is the internet. I made it myself. Hit subscribe if you like it.